Hey team, what's up? Today, we paint this purpley, painty thingy dingy. This guy. All right, strap in, it's painting time. Be ready, grab a brush. Give me a hell, give me a yeah! Let's paint right now! All right, all right. We're gonna start with, strangely enough, some purple. I mix me up some ultramarine blue with some alizarin crimson with a touch of titanium white and got this color. Guys, I'm just throwing color up. Not a big deal at all. So let's just warp speed to this part, shall we? Yes. Engage. I painted a similar painting a few months ago. And, well, to tell you the truth, I don't like doing the same painting over and over again. It's my ADD kicking in. Oh, hey, by the way, you guys want to ride bikes later? Stifle! Back to the painting. Oh, look at that sky. Not a lot of mystery to this guy, and y'all know the drill. Darker in the corners and up top, lighter as it comes down. So check it out. This painting is going to have some dynamic stormy clouds. I've never seen a purple sky quite like this, but if I did, I'm almost certain that the sky would be this rich and deep beautiful and definitely be caused by stormy weather conditions, I reckon. So I put in some color and blend out the bottom. Super important to have a wet canvas, otherwise uh, this won't work so well. And that's the workflow. Paint a little, blend a little, paint, repeat. See? I've got my blender on standby. Don't worry, little buddy. I'm gonna use you soon. You're on deck. Oh, nice. And a river runs through it. Well, a river runs off center through it at any rate. Same color as the sky. Same colors used. Ultramarine and some alizarins. That sounds like a snake's name. Greetings! I am the snake, a lizard. Look into my eyes. Trust in me. Just in me. Shut your eyes. Hold still, man, please. Yes! Did you know that the voice actor for Ka from the Jungle Book was also Pooh Bear? That's cool. And now the background. That sap green with more alizarin to fade it out and lower the dang value. Mixed with some titanium white. Now, just like the sky, make the lighter, more faded, low value colors and put them in the back. Yeah, <laughs> You know, that's not very PC. Art is racist as hell. <laughs> I think we should really change the descriptor value with something else. All colors have value, baby. They're all special flowers. But, uh, yeah. Until the revolution begins, low value color in the back, high value saturated colors up front. Helps create depth. You gotta keep them separated. Hey, that's pretty catchy. I should make a song. Dibs. Now it's tree time. Oop, oop, celebrate. Same deal, guys. These trees are way back there in the distance, so we gotta make them low value. Society and color theory says they have to be. Just get the shape. Like a beautiful woman. Some mystery is a seductive thing indeed. Let the viewer decide what they are going to see. Leave it without a certain je ne sais quoi, so that the viewer can insert their own ideas and make the pretty, pretty painting something they can relate to personally. Do not the force feed them, otherwise it is a boring and predictable composition in utter crappy merde. Mon dieu! <laughs> Don't be shy with them there are trees. Put them in. And with each layer of tree that is coming forward, strengthen the value and saturate the color. So hey team, here's a sick new cut from my music channel, Studio 214 Music. 
It's where all the music I write for this channel gets posted for you to enjoy or jam to. Check it out, would ya? This is Melodic Rockin' B on Studio 214. Now it's time to rock! Excellent! If you're a fan of the show, and no doubt, judging by my low numbers, you are not. <laughs> but, but, but if you were, you would know that I like to use my rocks as eye magnets. And this painting is no exception. So I am using strategery and placing them rocks in places that will help guide your eye to the central focal point. And if you couldn't tell, it's right up where the river meets the sky. It's rather spelled out, and I would rather keep it a touch more ambiguous, but we will figure that out later. As for the rocks, I'm using gray. Yep, plain old gray. And sitting them rocks right on top of the grass. A little umber for shadow. Then I poke him. Hey, you rock! Poke, 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 poke! <laughs> they don't do anything. They're nice rocks. We're rocks friends. You guys, I got to be honest. Rocks have gotten into my head. I'm having trouble figuring them out, man. They got mind control on me, brother. So I'm gonna work them and layer them. Yeah, I reckon rocks have a lot of depth to them. What with the shadow and the highlight and whatnot. So yeah, I toil away and I'm not satisfied with them. No, not even close. But I'm trying to stay away from using a knife, a palette knife, on my rocks. My mountains too. Yeah, it feels like it's cheating. And honestly, I want more control of where the paint goes. My mountains tend to look similar to each other. Thankfully, I settled on a super sweet look, you guys. So, it works for me. Right now it works for me. Right now it works. But, I am an artiste. And being artistic, it's not a destination, guys. It's a finish line, damn it! And I'm gonna finish this race, and then not change or evolve, ever! NEVER! <laughs> you can't change me and I won't do it even if you try! But yeah, that's probably not a good plan. Hmm. I kid. I am a kidder. I make the funny joke, yes? No? Oh. Speaking of such things, you know, changing as you grow older, evolving, becoming better, there's this dude, he's an older gentleman, in my class. Oh, by the way, I decided to go to art school. Turns out, after getting my bachelor's in science, baby, that I still had benefits left. So why not go back to school and become a renaissance man? So I studied music last year, and I will definitely go and study more music, that's for sure. But right now... I'm going to study. Well, I am studying art. It's super cool. It's pretty nifty to be studying a thing that has practical application whilst I'm doing it. I mean, I wasn't doing science when I got my bachelor's of science. And this is only good if your major isn't psychology, which mine was at first. Nobody likes a freshman psych major practicing psychology. I didn't even like myself. Luckily, because of my psych classes, 
I knew why and what made me tick. I literally, literally had an armchair that I sat in and did psychology from. I made a lot of friends, and my freshman year in college was super lonely. Luckily, I was only 16 at the time, and college was better than high school, where it was easy and I had friends, and... Why did I do that again? Oh yeah, because as my sergeant said to me, I am the stupidest smart guy he ever met. Thanks, Sarge. You're my friend, right? Of course you are. And thanks to my psych training, I knew what he was really trying to say. That deep down, he liked me and we were friends. <laughs> right? No. Oh, all this time. So anyway, yeah. I got benefits to burn and some learning to do. And practicing art is perfectly acceptable as a student. In fact, y'all need to. Turns out, for all of my gifts that I never had to work hard at to be awesome at, like drinking, man, let me tell you, I am awesome at that. Just ask my psychiatrist. I told her that I took freshman psych classes so I could help her with her diagnosis of me. I pulled out a matching notepad just like hers and proceeded to ask her what brought her into her office today. She doesn't think I'm funny. So I wrote that down and put it in her file. Her permanent file. So anyways, I got this old dude in my art class. I, I want to be that dude when I'm older. He gets to paint. He gets his brushes. He has probably been painting for years. I am really looking forward to the growth. Not so much the journey and hard work it requires to get the growth, but the growth in the end. Yeah, it's kind of want to fast forward through all the bull and get to the end where I'm super awesome, right? Yeah. I look at my old paintings that I kept because sweet Jen and dear old Jane wouldn't let me throw them out. Side note, guys, listen to your Uncle Greg. Don't throw out your old work. Don't paint over it either. They're fun to look back on and see the journey. Look how much I suck then and how great I am now. And then a year from now, you can go like, holy crap, that time when I thought I was good? I really wasn't, but I'm good now. And then and then, a year from then, you can be like, whoa, that time that I thought I was good, that I really wasn't? Well, now I am. It's a perpetual learning curve. It's awesome. It's called life, baby. It's rough. So anyway, yeah, don't throw your old stuff out. It's good to see how far you've come on your journey. I aim to improve with every painting I make. Every painting I do, I grow. And I'm a better painter now than where I was when I first started. Which is super cool. And I intend to keep growing with every painting I do. So, if uh, my calculations are correct, let's see. Uh, yes, probably. Divide by the square root of... Mm, carry the one. Oh, yes, here we go. If my calculations are correct, and they always are. Mind you, I have a science degree. In a few years, I should be the best painter in the entire world. Right? Of course that's right. How could it be wrong? I got the numbers to prove it right here. I can't wait. So anyway, this dude that's in my class is super cool, and I hope I'm still painting when I'm his age. Psst. I will be. <laughs> but first, it's tree time. Yes, sir. Now, what I like to do is take my flat brush. It's got relatively soft bristles. Load it with paint and start with a moderate amount of pressure on the canvas. And then lift that pressure as I go up. That way, the bottom of the tree trunk is thicker than the top. I'm using burnt umber with some titanium white for a little bit of highlight. Now... I'm probably going to leave the trunk in the middle right of the painting alone for now. I'll talk about what I'm doing and what I'm thinking in the next episode. Now, I, I don't like making these here videos in it more than 12 or 15 minutes long. So when I have enough footage, instead of making one 30 minute video, I split it into two. Is that cool of you guys? I hope so. I see some painters on YouTube and, uh, you know, more power to them, who have one, sometimes even two hour videos and show every stroke from start to finish, prima alla. Yeah, it's not really my style. I like to relax and paint leisurely. You see, I like to let my idea of what I want to evolve and change depending on what, what happens when an actual paint gets on the canvas. Things go to hell real quick. But this is why we train. This is why we have a plan. You see, before when I first started a few years back, I had a plan and I had better stick to it. It's like, 
when painters who use photos for their paintings, they put everything they see in the photo into the painting, every little detail, but that's just not how we see things, which is why I try to be careful when I use photos. Same deal with my plans. They become this rigid, unchanging thing that had <laughs> better be adhered to at all costs, and when, inevitably, the plan goes to hell, I would stress out and judge my painting not by its merits, but by what I wanted to create. There is this odd juxtaposition between what I saw and what I wanted to create in my brain and what was actually being produced, and I did not like the departure, regardless of the quality of the painting. So. I try to chill nowadays and let, let the canvas and myself decide as we go what is going to happen. You know, it's much freer. I have a general idea. I mean, colors I want to use. Is it going to, what kind of sky? Is it going to have clouds, no clouds, mountains, you know, structures? You know, usually I start with an idea, an easy one, and then get to work. And adapt and overcome as the situation presents itself. And then, bam! Unique painting. Yay for me! What's y'all's process? Do you stick to the idea in your head, or do you allow the painting to change? I'm curious, so let me know in the comments section. So anyway team, I think that's enough for now. Here's where we're at, and here's where we're going. So we got some work to do. If you like this and would like to see more, subscribe, would ya? Leave comments too. If you have any requests for paintings, let me know, and I will do my bestest. New videos every Thursday, and I hope to see you back then. As for me, I'm going to the house. For Studio 214, I'm Greg. See you next time.